There is a fifth dimension beyond that which is known to man. It is a dimension as vast as space and as timeless as infinity. It is the middle ground between light and shadow, and it lies between the pit of man's fears and the summit of his knowledge. This is the dimension of imagination. It is an area which we call the Twilight Zone. Matches, pencils, buttons, shoelaces, anything you need, anything at all. Anything I need, huh, Pop? That's right. No chance. Why do you say that? Because nobody has what I need. You never know. Take a look in the tray. Forget it, old man. Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. Every night you're out here selling this cheap junk. But I haven't seen nothing yet that fills the bill. Maybe you haven't looked close enough. Oh, I've looked, all right. Needles and thread, thimbles, eyeglasses. Where do you get all this stuff? From a flea market? Here and there. It's a hobby of mine. You never know what people will need. What people will need. You're crazy, Pop. You know that? You're out of your ever-loving tree. Am I? You can bet on it. Standing here like this, nobody ever stops, right? Oh, once in a while they do. Sure. Why would they? All you got's junk. Why don't you trade it in for a tin cup? Stick a sign around your neck that says, Poor me, nothing to eat, and no place to go. That wouldn't be correct. I have a room of my own. <laughs> yeah, right. A cardboard box in an alley. Actually, it's a rooming house. Been there quite a few years. I pay rent like everybody else. With what? Nickels and dimes? What do they give you for crap like this? People give what they like. A little or a lot. Sometimes, nothing at all. Then you're loonier than I thought. Face it, you're a bum. Why don't you admit it? Nowhere to go and nothing to do. You mean, uh, like you? Listen, you old codger. I got lots of things to do and plenty of places to do them in. Fact is, I'm on my way someplace right now. I got business. I know. In that bar. It's where you're going. You walk in, but when you come out a few hours from now... Hey, you don't know a thing about me. Not a blamed thing. So keep your trap shut. Sorry if I've offended you. I only meant that we're all exactly where we belong. The only shame is in not knowing opportunity when we see it. An opportunity, say, to improve our lot. Yeah? Well, I'm doing plenty to improve my lot. Just you watch. But you? You're going nowhere fast. You're going to stay right here till you rot. You're yesterday's news, old man. You're a big fat nothing. If you say so. I wish you a good evening, sir. Shoe polish? Ballpoint pens? Ah, get lost. I got business. Important business. Chewing gum. Candy. You've just met Mr. Fred Renard, age 36, who carries on his shoulder a chip the size of the national debt. It consists of an antagonism directed against the world, those who people it, and everything with which he comes in contact. The taste of his food, the temperature of his coffee, the fact that he has lost 11 jobs in the past year and three girlfriends in the past month. A general displeasure that is as much a part of the man as his eyes, nose, and ears. This is a sour man, a friendless man, a lonely, grasping, nervous man, a man who has lived 36 pointless, meaningless, undistinguished, failure-laden years on this earth, and who at this moment is looking for an escape, any escape, any route out of the norm, any path away from the sameness of his living, anything, any body to get him out of his rut. And though he does not know it yet, the little old man on the street corner may turn out to be just what Mr. Renard has been waiting for at an unlikely intersection in the Twilight Zone. And now, The Twilight Zone and our story, What You Need, starring Bruno Kirby and Bruce Kirby, with Stacy Keach as your narrator. Ready yet? For what? For me to pour you another one. I'm fine. You've been fine for an hour. I'm not finished yet. Then how come your glass is empty? You got a time limit? Look, we sell booze here, mister. We don't rent space. Is that a fact? That's a fact, buddy. Tell you what, then. Yeah? Why don't you just go take a flying jump at the moon? 
All kinds. You meet all kinds. You okay, miss? Yes, thank you. I was just leaving. Take your time. Oh, that was a heck of a season. Darn right it was. We could have gone all the way. Yeah, you pretty near did. Boston had nothing in the outfield. New York. Forget about it. We had it all sewed up. How you doing, Lefty? Oh, I'm fine, Sal. Yep. All sewed up. Then they brought in that slugger from Cincinnati. Bring the man another beer. Oh, you don't have to do that. I know I don't, but it ain't every day I get to talk to Lefty Garrity. That was a while ago. Listen, the man wants to buy you a drink. You let him. Make it two. Two drafts coming up. Thank you kindly, fella. Don't mention it. Hey, Pop. Good evening, gentlemen and lady. Does anyone need anything? Anything at all? Not tonight, Pop. You, sir? I told you. Get lost. Ah, so you did. So you did. How about you, miss? Matches? Perfume? Really, I don't think so. A hair ribbon, perhaps. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the young lady's hair. Thank you. Why don't you give it a rest tonight, Pop? You might have a look just the same. I have a little bit of everything here. I guess I'll take some matches. You don't need matches, miss. I don't? I'll tell you what you need. Yes, I think I know exactly what you need. What is it? Cleaning fluid. Cleaning? Very good cleaning fluid, guaranteed. Remove spots of any and all kinds. I think you'll find it useful. I really don't... Believe me, miss. It's what you need. Well, I suppose I... How much is it? No charge. Here you are. There you go. Two drafts. Thanks, Sal. You looking at me, Pop? He's okay. I know he is. I've seen him in here before. What have you got there? Oh, many things. Odds and ends. Things you need. Things I need? What do you think I need, Pop? That's always the question, isn't it? A cigarette lighter? I'm afraid not. I don't smoke. A pair of socks, perhaps? Man, that wouldn't help me. What I need... Well, you wouldn't have that. <laughs> Tell him, Lefty. The old coot comes in here every night bugging everybody. Tell him what you need. Go on. And what might that be? A new left arm. A new arm, did you say? Lefty was quite a ball player in his time. Pitched for the Cubs. Then his arm went sour. Didn't it, Lefty? Didn't it go sour on you? Sure did. So that was what happened. I should know. I dropped a bundle on him at a Sunday doubleheader a couple of years ago. What do you do now? What does he do? Well, for starters, he comes in here seven nights a week looking for his career. I keep telling him it ain't at the bottom of a bottle. Sometimes there are alternatives. Other things a man can do. Instead of pitching? Instead of baseball? Come on, let's get back to the socks and shoelaces, Pop. All right, give me one of each. That's more like it. I think this is what you really need. A piece of paper? Go ahead, take it. It's like a bus ticket. That's right, that's what it is. A bus ticket. A ticket to Scranton, Pennsylvania. Scranton, Pennsylvania. What's in Scranton, old man? I'm afraid I couldn't say. Coal mines. That's what they got in Scranton, Pennsylvania. They got nice, lovely coal mines. You can't pitch with that arm, Lefty. Maybe you can dig with it. wonder who that is. Sal's place. Somebody's old lady, probably. Or a book he called him to collect. If it's for me, I ain't been in. Got it? What? Yeah. Yeah, he's here. Hey! I thought I told you. Lefty. Huh? You want it on the phone. Me? That's what the man said. Wants to talk to Mr. Garrity. You're kidding. Hello? Yes. Uh-huh. But he never got any calls before. No. Are you sure? Maybe it's his wife. Nope. He's not married. When? Hey, listen, if this is a gag... Right. I understand. Uh-huh. Okay. I'll be there. And, uh, thanks. Thanks a heck of a lot. Well, what do you know? Dead rich uncle or a horse come in? I can't believe it. Believe what? Old manager of mine. Said he's been calling around trying to find me for three weeks. I thought he was putting me on. 
You owe him money? He said, he's got a job for me. A coaching job. Minor league club in Scranton, Pennsylvania. No kidding. That's great. A minor league club in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Wants me to take a bus there for, uh, uh, for an interview. Well, if that don't beat all. You hear that, Pop? He wants me to take a... Boss. Does he? How'd you know? Coincidence, maybe, or just good fortune. Why question it? Why question? It's there for you. But this ticket, I don't get it. I just don't get it. Better get packing, Lefty. You're wasting time. Oh, nothing much to pack. Uh, this is the only suit I own. Oh, I wish I had time to take it to the cleaners, though. You look fine. No, I don't. Still got this old stain on the front, see? Gravy or something. I like to look halfway decent when I meet the general manager. That's who's going to interview me. The general manager. Oh, I hate to look like a tramp. I can get a shave, but I don't have any other suits. Excuse me. I couldn't help but overhear. Why don't you try some of this on your jacket? What? It's supposed to be very good for that sort of thing. Uh, thank you, ma'am, but I... Miss. It's Miss. But I wouldn't want to... Here. Let me try. Don't go to any trouble. All I need is a handkerchief. Yes, I have one. It should only take a few drops. Stand still. Well, I'll be. There. You look good as new, Lefty. Thanks very much, miss. I appreciate it. That's quite all right. Oh, lucky you were around. Not really luck. The old gentleman there, he's the one who gave me... Where did he go? Looks like he just slipped out. Ain't that something. What do I owe you for the drink? Hmm? Oh, make it a buck fifty. Here. Last of the big time spenders. What's he in such a hurry about? Candy, breath mints, pencils. I saw what happened. Something for you, after all? A flower for your lapel. Is this what I need? That's up to you, sir. Or a nice necktie. I have several different designs. What do I need only? You tell me. One needs different things at different times. What do I need now? What do I need tonight? It's late. You stay right here. What do I need? Try this. Why? Is this a gag? Because if it is... Oh, it's no gag. Then what in the... It's what you need. Scissors? That's right. I want you to level with me, old man. I mean it. I'll spread you out for three blocks. So bad, they'll have to scrape you up with a spoon. It... It's what you need. It really is. Go ahead, take it. So what do I need a pair of scissors for? You don't have to accept them, of course. The choice is yours. You're giving me a pair of scissors? Precisely. Let me get this straight. I'm gonna need these. But you can't tell me what for. I'm afraid not. Well, let me tell you one thing. What I need is something that'll do me some good. Like a tip on a horse at Belmont. One that's gonna finish in the money. Just give me the name, I'll do the rest. Sorry. I know nothing about gambling. Is that the truth? But you're asking me to gamble on this? A pair of scissors? What's it gonna get me? I couldn't say, but I do believe it's... What I need. I heard you the first time. Well, I'll tell you, Pop. I need scissors like I need a hole in the head. Say, what are you trying to pull? Pull? You help those people in the bar. But me? I get something to open my letters with. Something to cut a piece of string. Now, you listen to me. These things will cut a lot more than that. Like your throat. Don't you forget it. If you think I'm some punk, you can pull a joke on. No joke, I assure you. Ah, forget it. What am I wasting my time for? You're just a nickel and dime loser. I got better things to do. I got business. Big business. Very well, then. If you're sure... Give them to me. You said they were mine, didn't you? I did. Yeah, yeah, why not? See you in the funny papers, old man. Perfume? Lipstick? Kitchen utensils? Anything you need.
talk to me. Carmine? Who's this? It's Freddy. Who do you think? Freddy. Been a while, huh? Not long enough. I ain't got time for deadbeats. Hey, what are you talking about? I paid you off every penny. Took you long enough. I always pay my debts. Say, listen, Carmine. I was looking at the racing form. What are you bothering me for? And I see a horse here looks pretty good. The sixth race tomorrow. Name of, uh, let me see. Staunch Soldier. Yeah, that's it. Don't make me laugh. That nag couldn't steal a purse from an old lady. I don't know, Carmine. Says they're taking the weights off. Plus, he's getting a drop in class. Sounds like a sure thing. So I was thinking. Why don't you put a C note down for me across the board? What are you, a comedian now? What'd you say? Must be something wrong with the line. You heard me. Come on, you know I'm good for it. No more credit, Freddy. But I tell you, I can make a mint. Don't con me, buddy boy. All right, 50 bucks. On the nose. I don't want to be greedy or nothing. She's coming in at 17 to 1. You know how much money that is? I told you, I ain't taking your bets. Now get off the phone. I got a business to run. But come on, I swear. Carmine. Carmine! Why, that dirty, lousy two-bitch. Hotel Carlton. Yeah, by the week. Payment in advance. In cash. Same to you, pal. Mr. Renard. Yeah. About your bill? I'll settle up tomorrow. That's what you said yesterday. Hey, I got a big payoff coming in. Deal I'm putting together. Just got a little cash flow problem. Strictly temporary. Mr. Renard. Give me till tomorrow afternoon. If I don't have payment in full... Don't worry about it, okay? Five o'clock, the whole thing in cash. Till five o'clock tomorrow, then. At the latest. You got it. Come on, come on. What's with this elevator? About time. Fourth floor, you broken down old piece of... Hey! What? My tie! How did it get caught in the door? Can't reach the button. Stop this thing! Stop! Get this off of my neck. Something quick. Something to cut it with. There. I don't believe this. I could have choked to death if I didn't have these. Billy! Evening, Mrs. Rajato. Oh, hi there, Mr. Pettit. You see that boy of mine? No, I haven't. I'll tan his hide when he gets home, staying out all hours. I wouldn't worry. He's probably out playing. Friends are important, you know, at his age. At any age, in fact. He's supposed to be doing his homework. His dad's gonna have a fit. I'll keep an eye out. Billy! You come in here right now, you hear me? Gotcha! Billy! You startled me. Did I? Hey, Mr. Pettit, um, you got any new toys tonight? Something wrong with your ray gun? No, it's neat. Only, well, I think I need a two-way wrist radio, too. Just in case. In case of what? Well, like, if there was a bad man, you know, I could call the cops. I don't see any bad men around here, do you, Billy? No, but what if there was? Tell you what. If you see any bad men, then you go inside and tell your dad. Or your mother. They'll protect you. Believe me. They're what you need most, not some two-way wrist radio. Are you sure? Absolutely and positively. Okay. Bye, Mr. Pettit. I gotta go home. See ya. See ya, Billy. Sleep tight. Now, where's that light switch? You! Is this what I need? A spool of thread? Who let you in? You gotta get a new lock on your door. I could open this one with a toothpick. How did you know where I live? No problem. I'm real good at figuring things out. You told me you had a room in a hotel. All I had to do was ask around. I'd appreciate it if you'd leave now. You missed this. Here, Pop. Nice button. 
Is this what I need? Please, just go. Sure thing. Only you and I are going to have a little talk first. It's late. I'm an old man. Nice pair of scissors you gave me. I'm glad you like it. Now, if you don't mind... Save my skin. You should have been there. Why? I was on an elevator seat, and my necktie got caught in the door. Ain't that the craziest thing? Couldn't reach the controls, so I had to use the scissors to cut it off before it choked me. How did you know? I don't know anything. I think you do. I asked you a question. How? What difference does it make? It might make a lot of difference. What have you got? A fortune-telling machine in here? Some crystal ball? No, nothing like that. But you can look ahead, can't you? See the future. Sometimes. Then you're an A number one dummy. You got a million dollar talent and you dribble it away for nickels and dimes. You're a loser. Shh, please lower your voice. Now you listen to me, old man. Your losing days are over. From now on, you got yourself a partner. I don't need a partner. I don't need anything. I'm content, Mr. Renard. I may have a certain gift, but I use it sparingly. Yeah. On bus tickets and cleaning fluid. You got cheap taste. But your new partner, he's not satisfied so easy. And what would satisfy him? Are you kidding? What satisfies him comes from expensive shops. It drives long and low on four wheels, and it fits nice and soft around the shoulders and drapes easy and looks uptown. Luxury, Pop. Luxury. Go ahead. Concentrate. What's in store for tomorrow? Let's go, old man. What do I need? Very well. Here. What's this? A pen. A lousy, old-time fountain pen? I've been sitting here reading the paper, trying to pick a winner, and what do you give me? A leaky fountain pen that drips all over the... all over the... sports page. Sorry about the accident. Hold on. Accident, huh? Is that what it was? An accident that a drop of ink falls right on a... a horse's name? If you say so, Mr. Rennett. Take a look. Ha! <laughs> this is wild. This is really wild. Sorcerer's Apprentice, that's the horse. Sorcerer's Apprentice runs in the sweepstakes tomorrow. Does it? Hey, Pops. Hey, you're all right. A leaky fountain pen. That's just what I needed. See you later. Yes, I suppose I will. In fact, I'm almost certain of it. Front desk. Nah, we don't have room service. They got ice at the liquor store. Get it yourself. Likewise, buddy. Well, well, Mr. Renard. Hiya, Tony. Been waiting for me? Uh, I hope you got that back rent, because if you don't... I said five o'clock, didn't I? I need the whole thing, plus this week in advance, otherwise... Here you go. Twenty, forty, sixty. Hey, your ship came in, huh? I told you. I'm a man of my word. Sure thing, Mr. Renard. Anything I can do for you, let me know. You get the evening paper yet? Right here. Just came in. Let me see the sports section. Tomorrow's races. Here we go. I uh, was wondering, uh... Yeah? How about a tip? A tip? I mean, for the paper and all. You want something from the liquor store? I can get it for you. You want a tip? Here's one. Yeah? Don't play with matches. Why don't you take the elevator, Mr. Renard? Still works last time I looked. No, thanks. Two ten, two fifteen. Still got two hundred and twenty bucks left. It's gonna be a million. I'll parlay it all seven races. Not just horses either. Prize fights, football, baseball, basketball, anything. Come on, come on. Talk to me. Come on. I got some bets to put down, starting with... I told you, Freddy, no more credit. Listen to this. Put your ear close to the phone. Get off the line. Hear that? Cash on the barrel head. Oh, what you do?
to? Rob your grandmother? Me? I took a little ride out to the track. Hit a long shot, 23 to 1. Now listen, I got some business to conduct. Big business. Better write this down. Starting with the first race tomorrow. Hold on. What are you consulting your Ouija board? Are you kidding? All I have to do is take out my lucky fountain pen like this. Your what? Or should I say, my leaky fountain pen? <laughs> Let's see what it drips on this time. I'm hanging up. Hold on, I tell you. This will just take a minute. You gotta put the dough in my hand or it's no bet. So I'll stop by. Sure you will. Just let me give this a little shake. Hey, what gives? This thing's all dried out. What kind of a con is this? Try a magic eight ball, Freddy. It works better. Must have had one drop of ink left. Now it's empty. Why, that old crumb? That crook? One shot and that's it? No way. This thing is worth millions. It will be. I'll beat it out of him. I'll take it out of his hide. Buttons, needle and thread, shoehorns, anything you need. There you are, you old coot. Mr. Renard. That's right. Whatever your name is. Pettit. That's me. Well, Mr. Pettit, you sure came up short this time. Oh, how's that? The pen you gave me. Yes, I remember. It don't work anymore. Is that right? No ink comes out. What a shame. So I can't pick any more winners. You've already won a great deal, Mr. Rennett, for a man in your circumstance. How do you know? You must have. And the things we need, we only need once. What's that supposed to mean? Just for a single occasion, that's all. An egg, the hand of a clock, the book of matches, a rubber band, a harmonica, a piano key, whatever it may be. But just once, that's all they're ever needed. Long enough to present an opportunity. What's next, then? Next? Come on, come on. You know what I'm talking about. Nothing's next. I'd rather not give you anything more. That's so? I'm afraid it is. I want to tell you something about me, old man. I was born under a lousy Zodiac. I've had nothing but the bad end of the stick since I was four years old. I feel sorry for you. I really do. You don't have to go to that kind of trouble. Just keep it coming. Keep supplying me with what I need. I don't care if it's scissors to save my neck or a fountain pen that gives me the inside word. Whatever it is, I don't want it to stop. That's a pity. Because it must stop. What are you doing? Closing up for the night. But why? Why does it have to stop? Because the things you need most, I can't supply. Like what? Serenity. Peace of mind. Humor. The ability to laugh at oneself. Those are all the things you need. And unfortunately, it's beyond my power to give them to you. Try one more time. Take a look in my eyes. Come on, old man, look deep. Look deep and tell me what I need tomorrow. You can see ahead. I already know that. Now, what do you see? Please. Go on. I said look. Please, you don't have to. What's in the cardboard box there? Go ahead. Open it. Nice pair of shoes. All shined up, too. Take them. Is this what you've got for me? Yes. They're for you. Nice. They're tight, though. Sorry. Too tight. And they're leather soled. I hate new leather soles. They're slippery. But they're what I need, aren't they? I put them on, and I walk someplace. Is that it? I walk someplace where I'll get what I need. Perhaps. Hey, old man, so what's with it? What happens? I'm waiting. That's another thing you need, Mr. Rennett. Patience. Yeah? Well, I'm tired of being patient. I sincerely suggest that... You giving me the business, old man? That's what you're doing? You giving me the business? I'll come right back across the street and take you apart bone by bone. Listen. Let's hear it. Where are these shoes supposed to take me? Are they what I need? I never said they were, Mr. Rennett. But I'll tell you a little secret. They happen to be what I need. Who are you? Hey, watch where you're driving. Can't you see? Look out! No! No! Ah! Did you see that? 
knocked it right out of his shoes. Somebody call an ambulance. Too late for that. I got the license plate. Mr. Renard, I looked in your eyes just as you asked. And what I saw was death. My death. You would have killed me. So what was needed, Mr. Renard, was one pair of slippery shoes. I'm sorry to say, that's all that was needed. Slippery shoes. Look at that old man. Is he all right? You okay? Oh, yes, I'm fine. Just fine. What happened? Hit and run, I guess. I heard the guy scream, and then the car just kept going. You see it, old timer? Yes, most unfortunate. A hit and run. Can you beat that? Poor devil. Need anything tonight, sir? Shoelaces, perhaps? Matches? Anything at all? Are you kidding, fella? What would I need at this time of the night? I'll tell you what you need. You need this. A comb? It's yours, sir. No charge. Don't be rude, Harold. Well, thanks, I guess. Put it away. You never know. What's his story? He's a peddler. I've seen him around. He's a loony is what he is. Middle of the night, he gives out combs. Says it's what I need. Okay, folks, stand back. Better call for an ambulance. Looks like it's a little late for that. Evening, officers. What have we got here? Who are you? Rollins, Times Herald. Uh, you mind if I get some pictures? Go ahead. Just don't touch anything. All right, folks, back up on the curb. Come on. Anybody see what happened? I did. I saw the whole thing. It was a hit and run. All right, get their statements. Right. You were both witnesses? Sure were. We'll need your names. And a picture, if you don't mind. Sure. For goodness sake, Harold, try to look presentable. Our picture's going to be in the paper. Yeah, I guess I better comb my hair. Well, use the one that man gave you. Hey, where'd he go, anyway? Hold still for a minute. Say cheese. Street scene, night, a traffic accident, and a victim named Fred Renard. A gentleman with a sour face and a disposition to match, to whom contentment came at long last, after no small measure of struggle. Mr. Renard, who was finally provided with all he needed on a lonely street corner in the Twilight Zone. More from the Twilight Zone after this. Hello, I'm Stacy Keach. I hope you're enjoying this edition of the Twilight Zone radio dramas. To learn more about this series, be sure to log on to our official website at twilightzoneradio.com. You'll find special discounts on our Twilight Zone audio collections, listings of our radio stations, links to other websites, and a photo gallery of our recording studio and some of our stars in action. Plus ways to contact us with questions or comments about the show. And for a limited time, when you log on to TwilightZoneRadio.com, you can send in for a free CD of the show. So be sure to visit us at TwilightZoneRadio.com. What You Need, starring Bruno Kirby and Bruce Kirby with Stacy Keach as your narrator, was adapted for radio by Dennis Etchison and written for The Twilight Zone by Rod Serling from a short story by Lewis Paget. Heard in the cast were Christian Stolte, Jeff Lupiton, Frenette Lebo, Kurt Navig, Linda Ryder, Max Kirsch, David Darlow, Carl Amari, Meg Falcon, Doug James, Roger Walski, and Vince Amari. To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to obtain audio cassettes and CDs of these programs, visit our website at twilightzoneradio.com. The producers of the Twilight Zone wish to thank CBS Enterprises, Carol Serling, Dennis Etchison, Dick Brescia Associates, Claire Simon Casting, Terry Jennings, XM Satellite Radio, Sirius Satellite Radio, our sponsors and our radio affiliates for helping make this series possible. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari and Jason Mallow for Falcon Picture Group. Doug James speaking. <laughs>